Hello, good morning, and welcome back to another episode of Over Easy. My name is Maddie, in case you're new here, or welcome back. I need to adjust the camera because it's bothering me slightly. There we go. Okay. Anyways, hope you are doing well. Welcome back to episode 73, which is a little bit wild. We're slowly and surely getting closer to episode 100, which is crazy to think about that this hobby thing has now progressed over two years at this point, And that is just wild to me. Okay. Well, Hope you're doing well. My name is Manny. In case you're new here, as I said, in case you're new here, I'm a 22-year-old creator. I don't even know what to call myself. I'm just a 22-year-old person. I like making podcast episodes, talking about my life, talking about what I'm going through, hoping that it'll help someone out there. And uh, yeah, we're just all learning together. So I have been having a great day and I just am in such a good mood to record an episode. So I'm here. I'm trying to be consistent again. I kind of fell off in the first few weeks of January, but I'm back and that is the best that I can do for myself. So let's get into a rosebud and thorn as I always do with every episode. A rose is something good that's happened. A bud is something I'm looking forward to and a thorn is something that's not so good that happened. Okay. My rose is that it is so nice in Vancouver yesterday, today, and this upcoming week. It is all sunny blue skies, but it's really cold, so it's really, really sunny, clear skies, totally blue, but it's like close to zero and going into the negatives this week, but I honestly love this weather. It is probably my favorite in the fall, at least. I prefer summer way more, but in the winter, like this is probably the best that I can ask for. I love just the sun. I love feeling the daylight, like the natural daylight coming into my apartment right now is just crazy. So I've just been having a really good day. I went out for a walk yesterday. My boyfriend and I went downtown. I'll talk about this in a sec, but I just have had a really good day and I think it's because of the weather. So good weekend and I just appreciate the good weather a lot. A bud, a bud I am looking forward to. I will also talk about this in more detail, but last week I was mentioning how I want to start to venture out into UGC, which is user generated content. And I actually started yesterday. I had a little bit of time on my hands. So I got to do a little bit of product photography and videography. And it was just so much fun to be creative, play with shots, play with product placement and just enjoy that. So I really enjoyed it. I still have to edit all the stuff together and make my portfolio and stuff. So I'm really excited to do that after I record this episode. My thorn. My thorn for... Mm, let me think. I, I honestly don't have a ton of thorns. I don't even think I have a thorn this week. Let me think. Uh, hmm. My thorn is maybe that... I don't even know. I was going to say the one that comes to my mind and it's not even a real thorn is that my boyfriend and I went on a real date night last night for the first time in a very long time. And I will explain this a little bit more in a sec. And it it just kind of makes me sad that we haven't had a real date night like that in such a long time. Like it's basically been since we both started working a lot more. We haven't really fully been able to appreciate each other's company. Um, usually when we hang out, it's either we have to do errands and we have stuff to do. But last night we truly just went for dinner, didn't talk about work much and just like enjoyed each other's company. And that was really nice. And it sucks that it was very rare, but also the fact that it's very rare makes me appreciate it more. So it's like a good and bad thing, but I definitely wish we could do more of that. But anyways, let me talk about my weekend my date night last night. So yesterday I went out for date night with my boyfriend. As I said, it's currently Dine Out Vancouver, which in case you don't know, a bunch of restaurants in Vancouver do this thing called Dine Out where they'll have set menus for a certain price and you get to pick a three course meal. That's at least the case for mine. I think every restaurant does it a little bit differently, but that's a general gist where you get a cheaper set menu and you get to try out more of the options from the restaurant. So it's a great way to try out new restaurants, try out new things from the new restaurants, stuff like that. So last night I, so basically I actually, one of my coworkers told me about it and reminded me that dine out's happening. I always forget that it's happening and I I don't really pay much attention to it, but I was like, oh, this weekend, like my boyfriend and I will finally have time to like hang out with each other. So I decided to look into the menus 
uh, on Friday during work. Whoopsies. I was just like alt tabbing between the menus and then like actual work and checking my email and stuff. But it's fine. It wasn't that busy on Friday. And we decided I like narrowed it down to a couple options also that had reservations for the following day because a lot of places were totally booked out because obviously dino is like a huge thing and everyone wants to go. So we ended up choosing Italian Kitchen, which is basically this famous Italian restaurant in Vancouver. I've been there two times before, I think, uh, like in high school. So it's been a really long time. They actually ended up changing locations and getting new management throughout the from the last time I went. So I felt like a totally different restaurant in my opinion. So we went to Italian kitchen and then last night we went at, I got the last reservation, like the latest reservation. And that was 5 PM already. All the other reservations were at like 3 PM. And I was like, uh, I'm not going for this kind of midday meal. I'm going for a dinner. So I got a reservation at five. And then when we got there, we saw the dine out menu. Basically the dine out menu for Italian kitchen was, it was $65 per person. If you wanted, you get to pick an appetizer between mushroom soup and another one. I don't remember because we picked the mushroom soup, mushroom soup or another appetizer. And then the mains there was like, I also don't remember, but for the mains, we picked the prosciutto wrapped lobster on top of risotto. And then dinner, there's only, I mean, dessert, there's only one option. You can also add $25 to get wine pairings with every single meal. So what my boyfriend and I did was we actually only ordered one dine out set. So we picked one appetizer main and the dessert from the dine out menu. And we also got the wine tastings. And then we also just ordered a couple other things from the regular menu because it was still happy hour. So there were a couple other cheaper appetizers that we wanted to try. And there was like a daily special. So for appetizers, we got the mushroom soup that was on the dine out menu. And then we also ordered the beef carpaccio which was not on the dine-out menu. It was on the happy hour menu. The beef, like this is what I I knew this about dine-out is that restaurants don't put their best stuff on the dine-out menu. They just put like their pretty good stuff that makes you want to come back and choose the more expensive options, right? So I knew that going in. I was like, oh, we're probably not going to get everything on the dine-out. We'll probably get some other things because the beef carpaccio was so good. It's not on the dine-out menu. Of course, it's more expensive, delicious best thing I ate actually not the best thing the second best thing I ate the best things we ate were not on the dine out menu at all so if that tells you anything then for mains we got the prosciutto wrapped lobster on top of risotto as I said I thought this was all right Um, I didn't really like the texture of the risotto and there were also green beans like both of them were very hard like you know risotto is like a pretty soft pasta I always feel like it's just very mushy and porridgey maybe that's not the proper way to eat it like make it but the one that we had last night the risotto was quite hard like it really felt like rice and then also the green beans felt like they were raw so then it was like so jarring to like crunch into that right away after eating like the lobster and stuff but it was pretty good nonetheless and then the other main we got was not on the dine out menu it was the daily special which was seafood fettuccine this was the best pasta I've ever eaten in a very long time. Uh, so good. It was a daily special, of course, not on the dine out menu. Basically, it was ho- uh, handmade fettuccine. You can tell the noodles are just hand pulled. And then there was mussels, shrimp, salmon, scallops, and then in this like creamy red sauce. It was so good. The sauce was not overpowering, but it was just so creamy. Delicious. Oh my gosh. It was so delicious. And then for dessert, there was only one option, which was the chocolate cake. And that was pretty good, too. I really liked it. So overall, it was just such a nice meal. And it was also nice to treat ourselves because we've been working. My boyfriend and I have been working so hard the last few weeks. And it just feels like we haven't had time to really appreciate each other and also the hard work we've put in. So it was nice to have that for sure. So that was my date night last night. I also wanted to give you, oh, also if I didn't say, this episode is just going to be a brain dump of just random things I've been thinking about because I feel like I haven't done one of these episodes in a while. And also I don't have a ton of topics that I want to talk, like, how do I explain this? I've been listening to a lot of podcasts where they're centered around like one topic and I don't think I excel at podcasts like that. I think I'm more of a conversational pod conversationalist podcaster where I just talk about a bunch of different random things. And I think that's just where I excel because my brain is like moving too fast to just talk about one thing the entire time. 
So let's talk about my update from last episode, which is that if you listened, I was kind of having a mental breakdown about my life, my work, just life satisfaction and stuff like that. I was just very feeling very trapped and unhappy because it felt like what I was doing didn't really align with what I wanted to be doing in the future. And it felt like if I kept putting more time, investing more time into what I'm doing right now, it kind of feels like I'm just digging myself a deeper well that I won't be able to get out of. And that was just my perception of it. It wasn't the reality. Now that I've passed that breakdown by a couple weeks, I realized, okay, I was kind of exaggerating a lot, but it's fine. It's fine. I still appreciate my feelings. A big part of feeling trapped was just feeling that I didn't have enough time to do the things that I wanted, like UGC, which is what I want to explore into and stuff like that. But I've actually realized like this weekend, I worked my regular hours. I worked more than regular. Honestly, I worked like, how much did I work this week? 25, 30, 34, 38, 42, 46 hours this week. So more than regular, but I was still able to have a really fun date night, get all my errands done and grocery shopping and do what I wanted, which was personally record my podcast, do some UGC content. So I don't think about it. I'm like, maybe it's just me not being able to manage my time well, but let's, maybe it is. I think that's honestly part of it is on the Friday night, sometimes because I'm so tired from work, I immediately just like give up and do nothing for the rest of the day. But I think I need to keep in mind that like I need to do something productive for my life, which is either cleaning or grocery shopping, like something adulting like on a Friday on the Fridays, because then I, I open up so much more time for myself on the weekend. And then also what's helped is usually on Sundays, I have worked from like 1230 or 1130 to 430, which is a lot of the day. On the weekends, I also sleep in quite a bit more than the weekdays because on the weekdays, I usually only sleep until five. I wake up at 5 a.m. most days. And so obviously by the weekend, I'm like exhausted, not just from sleeping, but also just from doing so much throughout the week that I sleep a lot. Like this weekend from Friday to Saturday night, I slept at nine and I woke up at 8 a.m. the next day, which is 11 hours of sleep, which is crazy. And then last night I slept at 10 and I woke up at eight. So I do sleep a lot on the weekends, but it just felt like with the Sunday shift, because I woke up later than I usually would, it just felt like my entire day was gone because as soon as I woke up, I get ready. I do film my podcast on Sundays, but once I did that, it was just like, oh, now I have to work and now I can't do anything else. So it felt kind of just like I wasn't using my time the best, but this Sunday, I hope starting from this Sunday, I'm only working from 2.30 to 4.30, so it opens up my morning completely. It's like just the mindset that your morning is open completely, and I've been able to go on a walk. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to talk about was what I did this morning, but I'll do that in a sec. I was able to just do so much more stuff, and I feel so much more satisfied with my weekend, so maybe it is a time management thing. It's my own thing, but anyways, from last week, I just like feel very motivated to get myself out of this current life state, which is working hourly and working for a wage and working for someone else. I want to definitely invest more into trying to build something for myself. That's always been something I've really been interested in is having one project at least for myself that makes me feel like I'm capable of doing something. And that's what I've been doing with my UGC is taking pictures and stuff like that. Later, I'll do my editing and doing my portfolio, getting that started. But yeah, So I was going to one thing on my brain dump today was I was going to talk about what I did this morning because I feel like it's just been such a great morning. So this morning, as I said, I woke up at 8 a.m. And I think the more important thing is just to wake up when you naturally wake up and not have an alarm blaring at your face as soon as you wake up. I just oh, I just am reading this book right now. Let me open it right up because I read oopsies. I read a chapter. Basically, I'm reading this book. It's called Live Your Best Life, which is about routines and questions about how to live your best life. So I just read a chapter this morning. Let's read it together about the alarms blaring at your face. So let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go?
Here. The habit is about, should I hit the snooze button? And I'll read what the book says. This book is by Dr. Stuart Faramond, and it's called Live Your Best Life, 219 Science-Based Reasons to Rethink Your Daily Routine, in case you're interested. So, should I hit the snooze button? That loud morning buzzer triggers instinctive survival responses in an area deep in the brain called the amygdala. Your heart rate soars as cortisol and the fight or flight hormone adrenaline stream through the body just in case you need to run for your life. Clearly, there's no wild beast about to pounce and when your conscious mind realizes this, the adrenaline surge fades and you may doze off again. But hit the snooze button and you're about to add insult to injury. An extra 10 to 15 minutes is simply not enough for you to be able to sink back into a refreshing sleep. When the alarm shocks you awake, you suffer the same biological torment all over again. Repeated searches of fear-fueled adrenaline may well force you out of bed, but over time can put your mood on a downer and affect your physical health. Years of stressful awakenings can actually contribute to the clogging of blood vessels, which can in turn increase the risk of heart problems. It's best to set the alarm for your desired waking time, then get up right away. If you really want that extra snooze, allow yourself at least 45 minutes to reap some benefit. Or some other tips are leave the curtains open overnight to allow daylight into your bedroom as early as possible. Sensors in the back of the eye detect the dawn through your eyelids, priming the body clock for morning. Second is set the central heating to come on at least half an hour before you wake to mimic the temperature change as the sun rises. And third is rig a time switch to your bedside lamp and fit a daylight bulb. Set it for half an hour before the alarm to jumpstart the cortisol surge. So it's a little bit different from what I was trying to say, which is just naturally wake up when you wake up. But I think it's just my, I, I notice so much when I wake up naturally and don't have an alarm like blaring at my face in the morning, which is on the weekends, I feel so much better than on the weekdays. One thing I want to, I'm looking into buying is in a light clock because I have found that I do like waking up at 5 a.m., but it is a little bit hard because I feel very, like the book says, like jarred open awake and it's kind of stressful in the morning and I don't love that. I think a light clock would probably benefit me best, especially because I know that I am very sensitive to daylight when I'm sleeping. Like I am someone who, I've always had big windows in my rooms growing up and even right now in my apartment so I am very sensitive to light coming in through the day and waking me up that way I'm very sensitive to that I know some people like can just sleep through it like my brother can just sleep through it until noon but I am just someone who's very sensitive to that so anyways I I woke up at 8 a.m just woke up very naturally which felt really good and then I got up and did my morning routine which if you don't know I've talked about this many many times I feel like eating breakfast, doing my journaling, doing my planning. And then what did I do after that? Um, I did a little bit of laundry in the morning. I like to start my laundry off really early on Sundays because I find that I have to do many loads. I do all my laundry on Sunday. So after doing towels and so many loads of clothes, I just feel like it's running the entire day pretty much. But So I set my laundry up and then I went for a morning walk. I went for a walk really quickly around my neighborhood. It was around half an hour long and it was just so nice because again, it's so sunny out and just really nice out. Like even though it's cold, my ears were a little bit cold. Um, it felt really good still. So I went on a walk. It was about 30 minutes. I was listening to a podcast during that time. Recently, I've been really liking, all my regular podcasts, honestly, but one of my favorite influencers, uh, she's not my favorite, one of my influencers that I like started a podcast. It's called Online Digital Diary by Hannah Elise. And I really like her podcast. Actually, I think she's really talented at podcasting. And I think I've kind of grown out of watching her YouTube videos, but I like her podcasts. So I was listening to that. I was also listening to the Rotten Podcast by Tiffany Ma. And then, yeah, I came back, made myself some breakfast, which was avocado toast and coffee, which is always my go-to. That's another thing is you should not drink coffee that early when you wake up. It, It doesn't really work for you. I was just reading about it in the book too. I'm not gonna read it out loud, but 
Drinking coffee right away is not very useful because your body already naturally produces cortisol that is waking yourself up in the morning. So if you're just adding ca- caffeine onto it, actually a lot of the caffeine doesn't even make it into your system versus when the cortisol wears off after you initially wake up and you start producing adenosine, which is basically what makes you tired, then you drink your coffee. It's a lot better for you. So I drank coffee at 10 a.m., which is two hours after you wake up, which is like the recommended time. I've been doing that for a while, actually, since I moved out and I, re- I have found that I really do like that routine. Made some coffee, did a bit of cleaning, took my trash out, you know, the boring adult stuff. And now I'm here recording my podcast. And I just feel like it's been such a nice morning, relaxing, not feeling I have to be in a rush, being able to do what I want. And it's been really nice. I'm like, is this what the adult life is supposed to be like? Because dang, this is good. I just appreciate the freedom and being able to do what I want. That's very, very nice. So that was my Sunday. After this, I'm going to record. Uh, I'm recording already. I'm going to edit my podcast and also my UGC content and then get that up. And then I'm going to head to work. And then tonight, I'm just going to make a nice dinner and then enjoy myself and be lit. So that is my first thing I wanted to tell you about was just like how lovely of a Sunday I'm having. I think it's really important to... Just take some time to be yourself, be by yourself and treat yourself nicely because that is kind of the foundation of your entire life. Anyways, I want to talk about this one thing and that is if you are on TikTok right now, you will most definitely maybe, maybe know about the Michaela L'Oreal event. And this is super random. I usually don't talk about pulp, pop, pulp culture. I said pulp culture, pop culture and stuff like that. But I kind of wanted to touch on it today because I have a lot of thoughts about this and I wanted to kind of openly discuss it with you guys. So if you don't know, Michaela, I don't know how to say her last name, Michaela Nogira, something like that. She's like basically the biggest beauty influencer on TikTok. She has 10 million followers. She does reviews and try-ons, you know, all the typical like beauty guru stuff. Um, So recently she posted a video using the new L'Oreal telescopic lift mascara and the telescopic mascara I already know, has been super popular recently, especially because I think Alex Earl uses that one and she's another influencer who's been popping off and it's been like selling out and all that. But that's besides the point. Michaela made a video trying out the new L'Oreal telescopic lift mascara. And I didn't actually know about this event until I saw the videos criticizing her about it. I never saw the original video until all this came out. So when I was watching the video, I noticed a couple things. First of all, There's no hashtag ad anywhere, which I believe is illegal if you're being paid to talk about something, but you do see hashtags like hashtag L'Oreal partner. Uh, I don't know the ones off the top of my head. And then in this tiny little text behind the caption of the video, so you can't even really clearly see it. It says like partnered with L'Oreal. So she made this video trying out the mascara and at first it's like totally normal. It's just brush, 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 you know, trying it out, just displaying how the different wands, because there's different sides of the mascara wand work. And then she makes a cut in the video. And at the end, she's like, this is after five coats and her lashes look completely different, like completely different, like way more voluminous, way longer, just way thicker, everything like that. And people started calling her out that she was wearing false eyelashes in the last clip, which is not illegal that in itself but it is illegal not to disclose that if you don't say that your lashes are enhanced in post-production or with false eyelashes in an ad like that is legal it's not illegal to actually wear false eyelashes in a mascara commercial as long as you disclose that to your audience but she didn't and she even made comments back to people when people started calling her out that they're not false eyelashes but it's really like from the first cut to the second you can obviously tell her lashes have like tripled in volume and it's there I'm a mascara user too there's no way this mascara just magically did that okay anyways that uh, this event in itself kind of made me a little bit upset about just the way that the influencer culture has been changing because First of all, I I don't know what her intentions are behind this video. I don't know if she truly was trying to 
just show like i don't know if her putting on the false eyelashes was hoping that people wouldn't notice and she was like she really wants this l'oreal mascara to do well maybe she gets a cut in profit i don't know or if she was just putting on the false eyelashes and not disclosing because she knew it would get a lot of views and people would call her out and start this controversy i'm not really sure i do think that the extent in which this has gone on in canceling Michaela and making all these videos about her, it is a little bit excessive considering in the grand scheme of things, this is not a huge deal, right? Okay, yes, advertising this falsely, that is like a legal issue in itself, but it's not that big of a deal when we consider, you know, it's just a mascara, and she's an influencer who makes lots of money already. We like, what are we doing? You know, I feel like the internet just picks like such random things to fight and and fight about, but they're really not the biggest things. Anyways, so I was a little I already knew she had another controversy before. I can't remember what it is, but I remember like last time I was like, oh, I don't really know how much I like this lady. Like I think she has a cool personality and she is cool, but some of the shady influencer sh- stuff she does and then never talks about is a little bit weird. So I don't fully like love her. I don't follow her. It's just what I've noticed. But the problem that I do have is that other makeup influencers are coming out of the works to shade Michaela essentially when they have done way worse things. And the two that I'm talking about are James Charles and Jeffree Star. James Charles has been through the ringer and I don't know why he still has a platform. I don't understand when so many facts have come out about him doing inappropriate things. I don't understand why people still support him, but that's another thing. But he has come out and started to review makeup and shade Michaela essentially for not being an honest influencer. And I'm like, you don't have the place to say that. And I know I'm just one lowly consumer in the in the sea of followers and whatever. But, you know, it's, it's really important, I think, to be really conscious of what content you are consuming because it has a lot of effects on you that you don't even realize. So the fact that, these problematic influencers are coming back and people are praising them for not being like Michaela and doing honest reviews when like a couple months ago do you not remember that these people also had scandals of their own I don't know like the influencer cancel culture is just so confusing and not honest and just upsetting to see because we're not canceling the right people I don't think cancel is the right word but The wrong people are getting accused of things way too exaggeratedly, if that makes sense. Like we're making too big of a deal about these things that should not be a big deal. And the things that are are a big deal aren't taken seriously and are just passed through. And then like a couple minutes later, people are like, okay, whatever. It just doesn't make sense to me. And then the other one is Jeffree Star's come back and also do makeup reviews. And I've seen so many videos of like, oh my God, I'm so excited for Jeffree Star to come back and make makeup reviews again. Do people not remember like how much suspicious stuff he's done? Like he is also not a good person. Like he might be a good makeup reviewer and I will say that. But that doesn't mean we can just automatically go back to loving him fully right i'm just so confused about this whole thing and how the internet has reacted because now it feels like these problematic influencers james charles and jeffree star are kind of just taking advantage of this situation to make themselves into a better light or put themselves in a better light when hello do we not remember what happened like last year a couple years ago throughout the pandemic all this stuff i don't know so that's my thoughts on that i'm just really confused about what's happening in the TikTok's beauty, I feel like the beauty space has always just been such a problematic space. And I don't know why. Is it because the influencers who are in the beauty industry that are bigger are naturally more competitive? Is that what it stems from? I've also seen other beauty influencers, like smaller ones, like micro influencers, make reviews of the mascara and they're great. I think it's just like when you become really big, you just start getting a little bit problematic it might be because you know how much money can be made and so you start kind of cutting corners and cheating a little bit I have no idea because I don't I'm not one of them 
But it's a, this whole thing is just really annoying to me because it just uh, feels like the wrong people are getting the spotlight and they don't deserve it, right? I don't know. Anyways, that's my, that's that on that, on the Michaela event. Let's move on to the next topic I've been thinking about. Okay, the next thing that I've been thinking about is, is it, what, I don't even know how to word this. That's how lost I am. But it's basically the idea that what if you really want to do something, but you're not good at it? Like you're not naturally skilled in that field. Let's say, for example, and also the vice versa of that situation, like you're really, really good at something, but you don't like it. So let's say, for example, in my life, I really, really want to be an astronomer. And to be an astronomer, you need to be really good at physics and chemistry. I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but let's just say that's the case. And let's say I just really, really want to be an astronomer because I want to go in space and see stars. I don't, I'm making this situation up on the spot. But in high school, all my chemistry marks are 50%. I barely passed because I'm just not good at chemistry. I'm just thinking, like, do I just keep trying to be an astronomer? What if the first time I try... And I don't get into the NASA program because my grades aren't high enough. And then I have to try again. And again, like at what point do you do you just forever keep on trying? What if you never get in? Or at what point do you give up? The situation I've been thinking about for my life is I'm just staring at this crowd of eagles. I think they're eagles or seagulls like flying around in the sky right outside my window, not right outside my window, but like in perfect view from my window. So that's what I'm looking at and I'm kind of distracted. But I'm just thinking about in my life, I've always really liked making content. I've tried for many years, but what if that's just not in the cards for me? Like I just really like something that I'm not very good at. Like I don't have the skill set for. Is that the case? But then again, It's not as simple as that because when you like something, usually you'll keep practicing your skills in that hobby and then naturally your skills will improve. So it's not like your skills are just set in stone, like you're going to be bad forever. But, you know, for everyone, there's always just opportunity cost, right? Like if I keep trying to invest so much time into doing content, but it just takes me a lot more effort to get the return back, like at what point do I just give up? Do I give up? I don't know. But what if it's truly just what makes my heart sing? That's what I'm thinking. And then another of the, on the flip side, what if you're really good at something that you don't really like? One thing I've noticed this week is I am really good at customer service. Really good. Uh, I'll give you an example of what I had to go through this week. Um, like a real life example. So In my warehouse job, basically what happens is shipments will come in from overseas. We will pass it through customs in the warehouse and then people can come pick up their stuff after it passes through customs. So what was happening was this lady wanted to come and pick up her shipment of furniture. She shipped some furniture from overseas and she wanted to come pick it up. And furniture, you know, can be really weird sizes. Like sometimes if you've ever been to Costco, I, now that I've worked at a warehouse, when I go to Costco, I'm like looking at so many things that I've never noticed before. So when I go to Costco, uh, when I see the shipment of furniture and I take pictures of it for the client, I'm like, here's your shipment, uh, just for reference. She asked me for pictures. So I took pictures for her. I took pictures for her and they were really weirdly shaped. Like there was a basketball hoop in one of them. I think it was like a sofa. I didn't really know because it was all wrapped in like wood and boxes. But that was like the general shape that I predicted. They were really weirdly shaped. And going into that, after I sent her the photos, I was like, you know, you should think about having the right truck to come pick it up because these are not normally shaped things. So on Monday night, I don't work in the afternoons in this job, but... On Monday afternoon, the client tries to get their trucker to come pick up the shipment. And then I don't know what happened because I wasn't there. But from what I heard, the trucker didn't realize that the shipment was such weird shapes and couldn't fit it in the truck. 
And so they had to go. And there was like this huge altercation. But I wasn't there for that. So I don't really know the details. On Tuesday morning when I come in and I check my email, I already see this huge email from the client and was like what happened last night like my trucker saying that all this stuff was in the back blah 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 she was basically just complaining about a lot of stuff and she was like I'm gonna call the manager this morning uh, blah, 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 to figure this out the phone ends up being transferred to me I am not a manager but the phone just ends up being transferred to me and I was talking to this lady on the phone and I just had the ultimate customer service voice and tone And I was just being really understanding. I was listening to her perspective of the situation. I was like, I totally understand there are damages on the wood crates because of X, Y, Z that can happen during transportation. We've already declared the damages. It wasn't because of us, blah, 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 blah. Like I was just trying my best to be the best customer service agent possible. I listened to her concerns. I listened to them fully. I addressed the concerns, blah, 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 did that stuff. And then she ended up being happy and they were able to pick up the shipment and that was it. And then when I, after that situation, I was like, huh, like, I think I'm actually really good at customer service. And I've also known this in my other math tutoring job because I'm really good at working with kids, really able to just read the vibe and adjust accordingly. And it's not in like a malicious way. I don't do this to, I knowingly will make more money. I make the same amount of money regardless, but I just enjoy ensuring that people have a good time and in order to do that you need to be really empathetic compassionate and able to read the situation and I think I'm really good at doing that which makes me really good at customer service but customer service is not what I want to do forever I mean not this kind of customer service right I don't want to be a customer service like phone representative for my entire life that's just not something that interests me but what if that's like what life has planned for me. And now this gets into like, is destiny already made or are you making your own destiny? Which is a whole nother topic. But what if it's like, these are the skills that I'm given and I need to kind of figure out what works best for my skill set? I don't know. So that's what I was thinking about. I was like, what if people just keep trying and trying and trying, but you know those little shape toys that babies play with where it's like you have to put the circle in the circle hole and then the square in the square hole? What if I'm like ramming a square into a circle hole? Like I'm trying to make this work, but it just isn't in the cards. Then it goes into do I believe that my destiny is like preordained, which I don't know if I believe. I think like your destiny is somewhat preordained, but also you can change it with the decisions that you make in your life. I think that's what I I don't think life is like an empty path that you just make as you go along like I think logistically (laughs) logistically because of the way that you are like whichever family you're born into blah 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 like there are things there are certain things that are decided for you already right like if I was born into a family where I was if I was born into Jeff Bezos's family Obviously, some things are preordained for me. I can go to whatever college I want to. I can do whatever I want. Essentially, money is never the stopping factor. But let's say I was not born into Jeff Bezos' family. I was born into like the opposite spectrum where my family can't afford these things. And I, when I start at 16 working, I have to help pay for bills. Like then your, your, your destiny is a little bit preordained, I think. Obviously, there are many changes, but it's really hard to just go from one to the other. That's at least what I'm thinking right now in this exact moment. And again, I've said before, when I say things on podcasts, things can change and my mind is always changing. So that's what I'm thinking right now. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe I maybe I can just use these customer service skills in another way, in a way that I want to apply into my life where I feel satisfaction. I don't know, but I actually do really like being a good customer service agent. Like I like being good at my jobs and I know that me being in customer service is like, that means I'll be good at my job. So (laughs) yeah. Okay. So that's that on that. I've just been thinking about that. I'm like, do, do people just have the skills that they have already? Are we building it? Maybe I can work on building more skills. I don't even know. Okay. Next up, I had my therapy session yesterday with my counselor. I scheduled it because originally I was like freaking about my life crisis. Um, 
which I had last episode. And so usually when I have these life crises, I message my therapist right away. I'm like, oh my God, do you have availability for a session right now? And usually he can't because obviously he has things to do. So we ended up scheduling a session for yesterday, which was a couple weeks past my life crisis already. And when I get to that point, I'm like, oh, actually I kind of exaggerated a little bit and I think I'm fine. But one thing that my therapist said to me that really stuck with me yesterday was just to appreciate how far you've come. I feel like I fall into this all the time. We're always just looking forward to the next thing, next career milestone, next milestone in our life. When I was in school, next deadline, next midterm, next whatever. Like we are always forward thinkers and that is just how life has trained us to be. But it It's only when you stop and purposely pause and look at your life that you've realized, holy crap, I've come so far. In my life particularly, I have just realized how far I've come with my own personal development, with my own growth, with my own independence that it wasn't until he stopped me yesterday and was like, just think about how far you've come. Like even since the beginning of my therapy journey, starting therapy in second year and now I'm out in the real world, graduated a real person, that just blows my mind. I've come so far. I moved out on my own. I've learned so much about myself throughout moving out and all this kind of stuff that it just really hit me. I was like, oh yeah, why am I freaking out so much? Like in the grand scheme of things, I have already come so far and this is just another challenge I will get over. Sometimes I just get myself into these ruts and I'm freaking out about the tiniest things I realize and I'm like, "Uh, okay, I need to calm down a little bit. But I think, especially right now, as I'm transitioning and learning about my career and what I like and what I don't like, I have to realize like, just because something doesn't work out doesn't mean it was a failure. It was still a worthwhile endeavor because I got to learn more about myself and it was just a part of my journey. That's one thing I talked about before is this year I want to go into this year with a mindset of nothing is a failure. It just brings you closer to what's actually going to (sighs) happen. So even if I try this content making thing and it doesn't work out and I'm not able to do what I really want, which is make a jillion dollars, (laughs) that's not going to happen. But Maybe it's not as successful as I think. And I'm like, oh, it's still not a failure because it was still a worthwhile endeavor. I got to try something new. I got to learn more about myself, about my skills, about who I am. And that is always a win. When is that ever not a win? You know what I mean? So if you ever feel just really lost and really you feel like you're trapped, take a step back, look at your life and just realize like how far you have come. Because for a lot of us, we don't realize that until we're prompted to think about it. It's not something I naturally think about. It's like, oh, last year, this time, what was I doing last year, this time? Last year, this time we were still in online school because of Omicron. And now I'm living my best life. Like that's crazy. How much can change in a year? How much can change in two years? That's wild. Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about today is comparison. This is something I've been feeling a lot and actually kind of stemmed my life crisis, my recent life crisis at least. So let's talk about it. So especially right now with me being out of post-grad and all my friends also graduating right now, it's so easy to compare myself to what other people are doing. This kind of started when I went to New York and I saw a bunch of friends that I hadn't seen in a while and I was like, oh my God, two of you are working as consultants at one of the big four firms. You're an investment banker, stuff like that. I also went skiing with someone recently and she was talking about her first like job when she's starting her job, how much she's making. Like it's just natural to compare your situation to other people's because it's it's a good thing in some facets because it allows you to see what is possible, right? If I didn't have these outside people to tell me these things, I would never know what's possible in this world. But it's also obviously negative because naturally we will all compare our accomplishments and what we're doing to what other people are doing. And it's really hard to not feel bad about yourself in that case. I know I've definitely like hit myself hard for just comparing myself and not being as good as quote unquote other people. But you just have to remember, at least what I tell myself is the grass is 
always seemingly greener on the other side. And this is what also my counselor told me yesterday is I can compare my current work life to, let's say, one of my friends who's a consultant in the big four. I can compare. I'm like, oh, my God, you're making six figures. You are living in New York. You're doing all these things. And that seems so cool when I look at it right now. Obviously, we only compare the good things and we're like, we know the bad things of our own situation. I'm like, oh, I have to work 11 hours every day. I am like not being paid the most. I'm obviously not making six figures. It's natural for us to compare like that. But you have to remember that every situation also has downs too. Like in the case of the consultant New York City lifestyle, that Wall Street lifestyle, when I was with my friends on that New York trip, I already could tell that there were a lot of downs that I'd never saw about that lifestyle. First of all, they have to be in meetings at random times, like they're on call all the time throughout the night, even outside of working hours. I had friends who were in meetings 8.30 at night until 10.30 and then had to wake up to be on another meeting at 8.30 the next morning. So I was like, oh, I never realized you had to do that. I thought it was just nine to five and that was it. But Even that alone, that one little facet of like having to be on call during your off hours turned myself off of that lifestyle so fast. I was like, okay, never mind. I'm not going to complain anymore because I would hate that. What I love about my life is that when I'm on work, I'm on work. And when I'm off work, I am off work. I am two separately, totally separate humans. Like work does not bleed into my personal life, although it does because obviously my boyfriend and I work at the same place and we naturally talk about work in our personal life. But it's not like... I have to be working when I don't want to be, when I'm not scheduled. I am just, when I'm scheduled, I'm working. And when I'm not, I'm not. And I love that about my life. I love that about hourly pay and just wage pay. That's something I actually love that I want to keep. But one thing that I saw was obviously that they had to be on call. Like they're on salary, so they have to be on call all the time. When their managers call a meeting, it might be like 15 minutes before and you just have to hop on the meeting right away. Like that is terrible. I would never want to do a job like that. I think I would actually be so upset. Feeling like work is just my life all the time. Like I'm always, I'm also very like an anxious person. And if something comes up out of the blue, like it makes me really, really, like I get thrown off really easily and it's really hard for me to, go with the flow, if you can say that. So I know that if I were in that lifestyle and there were just meetings being called left and right out of the blue, I would just never leave my house and just always be on call. And that's like not a life worth living, you know? So when you are comparing yourself, whether this be about your work, whether this be about your looks, whether this be about whatever it might be, just know that the grass is always seemingly greener on the other side. Everyone has downfalls and cons to whatever they're going through it's just that people are really good at hiding it even me I post on Instagram like my life is great but there are things that are not going well in my life all the time my life isn't perfect all the time it just might seem like that because I post about it a certain way on social media and obviously everyone wants to just post their highlights on social media that's what it's for so just know that when you're in a rut first of all turn off your phone get outside, go for a mental health break in that situation. And also just constantly remind yourself there are always bad things in every situation. No matter what you choose, there will always be bad things in the situation. It's just whatever, it's just different depending on the situation. And they might not be as bad depending on what you want. You know what I mean? Like for example, I'm trying to think of one. Mm. Hmm. I'm trying to think of, I don't know, but some cons are better suited for your personality than other cons, if that makes sense. So you just kind of have to pick and choose what you want to battle and just know that everyone goes through struggles like this. So yeah. Anyways, that is going to be today's episode. I feel like I popped off on certain topics and I just had a really fun time recording today, which I have not felt in a very long time, to be honest. So I'm really, really motivated and just feeling happy. Dude, it's it's the sun. The, the sun is the cause of all of this. So I hope you have an amazing week and I will talk to you so very soon. And I hope you enjoy. Have a magical day. Goodbye. And I was like, yo. Yo.